Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be making soap in a slab mold for the very first time. <laughs> I really wanted to start my 2024 with a bang and I thought that this project would be the perfect start of it. And just a really great example of how I'm just diving head first into new things. And while this is very exciting, my start to 2024 hasn't been exactly smooth. I did get scammed and I will go into that as I make this soap. So if you're interested in a bit of a chit chatty, let's make soap together video, then you're in the right place. So a little bit of context, I moved to the United States from Canada back in the springtime. And during that time, I had a lot of paperwork type stuff that I had to deal with, not just for my status in this country, but for my business too. I had to re-register everything. I had to establish my business here in Washington and that comes with a whole bunch of other stuff, which is boring and I won't get into that. But one of the things that I had to get was a tax business ID. This is known as an EIN. I think it's called an employer insurance number. But this is one of the things that I needed to get as a business registered here in Washington so I can start doing my taxes here as a company in Washington. And when I Googled EIN tax business number, the first Google results were these websites that said that they would do the filing for you or something, or it would help you register your EIN and get you your EIN number. So of course, this is one of the things that I clicked on. And then I find out later that getting an EIN is not only free from the IRS, but it's also instant. You just fill out the same info on an irs.government website and you just get your EIN number immediately. I'm usually very careful about this kind of thing. So when this happened, I was really upset. And I was also worried that I submitted all this info to this weird website. So now I'm trying to dispute that charge and get my money back. So I'm dealing with that. We'll see what kind of fallout ends up happening from that. But when it comes to small business stuff, it is so easy to get scammed in all areas, whether it's from suppliers or people trying to sell you their stuff or registering your business somewhere. So whenever it has something to do with the government, make sure you're using a website that says the thing that you want to do dot gov, G O V <laughs> and double, triple, quadruple check that the website that you're submitting all this information to is an actual legitimate website. Unlike me, don't be like me. So right now measuring out my coconut oil and shea butter for the soap, it's gonna be quite a bit of coconut oil, over 2000 grams of it. So I think what I'm gonna do is do 1000 in here and then do another, the rest of it in two separate goes. But this is all very new to me guys. And I will come back once that is all measured out. So we are almost at go time and I'm really nervous. I'm being honest. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. And this is a lot of raw materials that I'm going to waste if it doesn't turn out. And an update on the scam situation. I emailed this company to see if I could get some sort of refund, but I was already writing them off as a scam. So I was just doing it for documentation sake when I disputed the charge for to get the money back on the credit card that I used, but they responded and gave me my money back. So <laughs> that worked out. Really happy about that. <laughs> happy endings. But let's focus on the task here at hand. I don't know if I'll be talking much if, to be honest with you, cause I always get in my head a little bit. Look at how much oil this is. I added some, hold on, let me see. Let me turn on my other overhead camera. I've added Kaylin Clay to this. So I'm just going to disperse it. Get it all mixed in there. And I have my mold over there. I really wanna get my first slab soap mold on, on um, video on my phone. So let me set that up. I have all my colors here that I've already pre-mixed with a little bit of sweet almond oil. I'm just going to give them another mix to get them going again. I don't know if this will be enough mica. 
is all brand new to me, guys, and I'm I'm nervous. Yes, let's get that just redispersed. Perfect. Okay, and I think for the different colors, I'm gonna get some buckets. I'm planning to use five colors, so I have five buckets. I don't know if I'm gonna need them. Okay, so I have everything, I think. Now all I need is to add my lye water to this and start soaping. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. My lye water over here. Let me switch out my glasses. All right, now that I have my safety goggles, we can start. Wow, it just almost got to the top of this. <laughs> okay, so that is my lye water. I'm gonna use my stick blender to start stick blending. Oh, looks like I'm losing some stuff over the edge there. So I've stick blended until all of the streaks are gone. <sighs> I did have some spillage, unfortunately. I definitely need a bigger container. How do people do this? Oh my gosh. I'll get better with this, I promise, but oh my gosh, look how much soap this is. Did I make too much soap? I hope not, that would be awkward. Okay, now let's fill this bucket up with the main color. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Okay, I'm gonna pour this soap and I'm going to get some elevation for this because I think I'm gonna spill a bunch of soap here. Gotta do this fast. Oh, nice. Oh, I did that much nicer than I thought I was going to. All right, this is the main color. All right, that went so much smoother than I thought it was going to. I hope I got that on camera. Oh God. Okay, here's my soap. The majority of it can chill for now. So this is gonna be the blue color. And I have it set aside here, but I don't know if this is gonna be enough to color this as vibrantly as I want it to. It might be really pale. I don't know, we'll see. So before I add any fragrance, I'm just going to stick blend this color in and see the color that I get. No, let's not use that. Let's use this. It might end up being a very pale blue color. No, well, actually, it's not bad. Okay, this color I think is doable. Let's hand stir this in again. Everything is still smooth, guys. We are still in business. Now to get my mold. So this is Winston and Walters slab mold. I'm not exactly sure right now what model it is, but I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking this might be, did I make too much soap? Okay, let's see. All right, we're pouring this in. No, no, I think we're on track. Where's my, where's my spatula? Things just, just get lost here. It just seems like a lot of soap, like a ton of soap. All right, there's that. And now, next, I'm going to pour the soap in my other buckets. I think I'm gonna reuse this one. See, I don't have a ton of space. I'm just, oh gosh, what's happening? Okay, I'm gonna set this down on the floor. I have four colors, so one, two, and four. And I'm going to pour my soap into each one. All right, first you, two, three, and where's my spatula? Pour this last one into here. Yeah, that's pretty even, great. Now I'm going to add my color, my other colors, we're gonna start with dark blue and this guy. We're going to oh, do a 
purple in here. Sorry if the angle is not great. I am panicked right now. <laughs> we have a green. I don't know why I'm attempting so many colors. Go big or go home, right? Just see how it goes. Those colors in there. Dark blue turned out nice. How's this purple gonna turn out? And you guys don't have a visual on any of it. And I am sorry. So I didn't even introduce the soap that I'm making. I'm making high tide soap. This is a really good seller of mine. It's like an ocean fragrance and I love it. All right, now that I have my colors mixed in, I'm gonna add the rest of my fragrance oil in. Oh, this fragrance oil is amazing. Love it. Okay, I think I mixed in the right amount of colorants, which is good. I think my colors are gonna be pretty vibrant, which is awesome. As I say this completely off camera, you can't even see what I'm doing. That is okay. All right, now that I have my colors mixed, let's start pouring this in. So, all right, first one, first color is blue. Wait, hold on, how do my marks? Yeah, marks are set up this way. <laughs> okay, I'm actually going to pour a little bit of the purple into here. And then try that again. more purple in here. Then I'm going to take my chopstick. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's that. Then I'm going to green in my purple. Then start pouring my purple in there. Oop, the lid of my pail got in the way there. Okay, that's fine. Then we're gonna go in with some more green. Smells amazing. Get my spoon in there and break up these colors a little bit. All right, and now I'm gonna pour some white in this green. Pour that in here. I think my calculations were good, guys. I think I was able to get the right amount for this soap mold, which is good. It's always a big help when your calculations are on point. I'm going to do another shuffle so that everything's even. Get into those corners there. Okay, and now, to know where I'm going to cut the loaf, I'm going to get my ruler. And I saw this trick from the beekeeper's wife on Instagram. She has an amazing Instagram account. If you guys don't know about her, please check her out. She's awesome. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna yeah, do this. And this will tell me where my loaves will be cut. No, it's making a straight line at all, but. So the this soap mold is gonna make me not tall and skinny bars, but short and squat bars, but they're still gonna be chonky. All right, so I made some lines here that are gonna tell me where my lows are gonna be. They're not exactly straight, but that's okay. Now I'm going to do my signature waves. And the more I do this, I hope, I'm hoping the better 
I get at this because that's what skill building is all about is just doing something over and over again until, until you got it, you know? I have to get used to making my waves a little bit wider now because I've been so used to the tall and skinny bar. Okay, so before I do that, I'm going to just really scrape out my buckets here, get as much soap as possible. And scraping the soap isn't just about like getting all the soap in there. I mean, that's a huge benefit, but it's also really helpful in the cleanup process. The less soap there is in these buckets, the less I'm gonna have to scrub off tomorrow when they've all saponified. And I also changed the design of this soap from my first iteration because the colors weren't vibrant enough for me. I was not happy with them. So I added some purple in there. I removed the micas that were giving me trouble, replaced them with better micas, I hope. I was telling a fellow soap maker that I was wanting to do this for so long, but this was the part that I was so nervous about not being able to do because <laughs> I'm able to do this easily on my tall and skinny molds. I have been doing them for years, so I was really good at it. <laughs> and so doing this here, very nervous because I had no idea if it was gonna work out. But now that we are almost done here, I can say with confidence that this wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Although definitely not easy, I'd say. This is definitely a, an advanced, an advanced soaping technique that I wouldn't try unless you've definitely mastered smaller batches. It's gonna be my mini bars. I don't know if I'll sell those actually, but just keep piling the soap on places I think need it. This is really great because the next time I restock this bar, it'll be a bunch of them instead of just a few, which will be a huge help in my business. All right, so that is all the soap. Now I'm gonna do the thing that I do best and that's swirl these tops. So I'm just going to do that. had a brain fart there for a second, which is why I was hesitating. My muscle memory was stalling on me. Okay, this is really cool. Wow, I'm so proud of myself, yay. Oh my gosh, that could not have gone any better. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now I'm going to add my signature flare to the top. I'm gonna flare these up. I like to add a spray of mica. And so for this, I, I don't know if I've seen other soap makers doing this with their soap tops, but I've been loving doing it with my soap tops. It looks so cool. Is it kind of like this hollow vibe, holographic vibe? and I'm just spraying it. People ask me like, is there water in there? No, it's just, it's literally just mica in here. Oh, my movie's recording stopped automatically for my overhead camera. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, I have my phone recording of it. So if that failed, then we'll just use that. And this soap is, everything oh my gosh this is this is incredible so here is the final poured soap and i'm going to clean up everything and come back to you once i've cleaned up everything and we can admire this soap in all of its glory so we are back and i've cleaned everything and i need to show you this soap close up this is so beautiful and i don't know what it is maybe it's just that is in such a big mold, <laughs> but it's just so satisfying to look at. 
and it came together really fast. I think this definitely will speed up my process and it'll help me scale up my production. And because I did my other scents in the longer loaves, I know that the fragrance oils, um, how they'll behave. So I think they will translate well in a slab mold, just like this fragrance oil for high tide did. And oh my God, just look at the gorgeous detailing. And this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid I wasn't gonna be able to get these kinds of tops in a slab mold, but here we are. <laughs> oh, that looks so, so beautiful. I have a crush on my soap right now, guys. I'm sorry, just really admiring my work. And this is my first soap that I've done in a slab mold. I'm very, very pleased and proud of myself. But this is only half the journey. <laughs> we still have to get the soap out of the mold, cut it into loaves, and then cut each loaf into smaller bars. And I'll show you exactly how I do that tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Hey guys, it is the next day. And here is the soap. And it looks like it has completely solidified perfectly. The soap looks great. There aren't any cracks. I think the inside is going to look good, but there's only one way to find that out and that is to cut into this. This soap is 24 pounds and it is, it's heavy to say the least. So it's not just a challenge getting all the soap into the mold. It's also a challenge handling this much soap and then cutting it. And to cut something like this, I needed a special tool. And this is where this tool came in. And you can see it's still wrapped up in its wrappings because I haven't used it yet. Brand new, but here it is. <laughs> this is a Caterpillar log splitter from Custom Craft Tools and it is beautiful. Let me assemble it and you can see it in action. So this was the main cutter and it also came with these guys. We have a soap cutting tool. And then here we have an extra guitar string, it looks like, in case the strings break. And it looks like we have a little ruler. That's neat. I think that goes, I think this goes here. And you can measure how thick you want your soap bars if you're going to be cutting them individually like this. But this guy, I think goes here. So when you feed your big slab of soap through the wire, is gonna cut that soap down. All right, I am so excited to give this a whirl, but first we gotta get that soap out of the mold. <laughs> Winnie and Walt molds are awesome because to unmold the soap is very easy. At least it was with my long, tall and skinny mold. This is a completely new mold. We're working with a lot more soap. So I don't know how this is gonna go, when I was at the conference last year, Etienne, who is the owner of La Fille de la Mer, she made it look so easy. She was able to handle this much soap pretty well. Well, she's used to it and she's definitely stronger than I am. So the first challenge is getting this soap out of this mold. And I'm trying to understand my technique here. Do you go this way maybe? Go like that, oh, <laughs> I guess that works. Okay, this is my first time doing this, so I'm very nervous. Okay, so the side I think works and then we can go up and push it away. Okay, that works. Pull that away, we'll put you aside. Okay, so we have oh, this giant slab of soap, 24 pounds. Whew, okay. I'm gonna put my gloves on, I think. And I'm gonna use the lid of the soap mold to act as kind of like a platform for it. So let's peel away the edges like I would with the tall and skinny loaf mold, the, the 20 inch. Okay, so I've peeled the edges away. It's sliding away pretty easily from the back, which is good news. It's now sliding it forward, that's the tricky bit. Oh, okay, this might work. 
All right, guys, I might have a technique here. I got it out. <laughs> okay, so we are now, so here is where we're at. Now we're going to slide it through my new log splitter to split this guy into some workable logs so I can cut them into soap bars. Okay, so I'm just going to move this here to the side. I'm gonna move this here. So here's my first log split of 2024 and really the first log I've ever split. Whoa, this is working nicely. Okay, <laughs> whew. Okay, that took a little bit more effort than I thought it would, but here is the first loaf, beautiful. And here is the side of it. Very, very nice. Okay, let's keep going. soap I have to manage, but it's, <laughs> wow. And I'm breaking out in a sweat. And here is my last bunch of soap, my last little bit. Here's my little mini loaf soap, which I plan to give out as samples. And here is the last log. I don't know how the pros make it look so easy. That was not easy, guys. So here is our first soap loaf. I'm going to lift up my beautiful soap cutter. Going to go from the edge. And these bars are gonna be short, squat, but they're still going to be chonky. Ow. Wow. And definitely the more you get to the middle, the more interesting the patterns get. The next slab soap that I plan on making is my Cascadia soap. And I'm excited about that one. I'm redesigning the bar. It's gonna be a, a dark green bar. It's gonna actually be very similar to Forest Fairy. Here's the last bar out of that loaf. Gorgeous. So that first loaf was very cool. Let's keep going. Here's my next soap. And I size these soaps based on the soap boxes that I use. And a lot of people have observed that my soaps are a little bit thicker than the average soap bar. So that's why I hesitate to give the exact dimensions of the soap box size that I use because I don't think my soap size is a very common soap bar size. What I think you guys should do instead is measure the soaps that you have and buy a box based on that because boxes can come in all sorts of different sizes. Beautiful. And some differ by a tenth of an inch. So you definitely want to be shopping based on your soaps. Remember the sky is the limit when it comes to your soaps. Oh, this is cool. I like how the top looks like a bit of a mountain. That is very cool. It's hard with the slab mold to get intricate swirls. <laughs> but then again, the more experience I have with it, hopefully the better I get. Kind of like with the tall and skinny loaf mold, just kind of get a feel 
of what works. It's kind of fun to be returning back to the short and squat size. <laughs> but I think for my specialty soap bars, which I'll be releasing on a monthly basis, my limited edition soaps will be still in the tall and skinny size. The first of those soaps I'll be making in the next couple of days, but I definitely wanna restock my line of soaps. So I'm still figuring out what I should do first. I love the soap cutter. It's just so amazing. See, these swirls turned out a little bit better. One thing I'm noticing about this slab mold is that you really don't know how these swirls are gonna turn out. Look at that, so cool, gorgeous. So like I mentioned, the next soap is going to be Cascadia. And then the next soap after that is going to be Wildberry. And these three scents I think were my top three sellers. So I'm eager to get those back in the back in the shop. Oh, this is really pretty. This town this turned out gorgeous. And the last bar, which actually turned out to be the prettiest bar, in my opinion. <laughs> so I have this last piece of soap. And what I'm gonna be doing with that is to sell minis of it. So I wanted to quickly show you what else you could do with this caterpillar tool. You could cut down your soap remnants to a very specific size if you want to, and use this guy as the cutter for it. So if I wanted to make small little sample bars, I could do that. So let's see, let's just come down and you've made a little sample size soap that you get sell, which is what I plan on doing with these soaps, these little minis. Whew. So from that, I was able to get 44 bars of soap plus seven little mini bars like this, which I think will have their own fans because it's a substantial bar of soap. People seem to like the variety. So I think that's what I'm going to do on my website when I reopen it right now. My shop is closed because I want to build up my stock and hopefully have three soaps available when I reopen. And I'm hoping that'll be Monday, but we'll see about that. And I do plan on releasing a limited edition soap that won't be in this short and squat size. This, this, uh, this size of soap. It's gonna be the tall and skinny. Oh, this smells so good. I love it. My final thoughts on making 24 pounds of soap all at once. It's not easy. It took me nine months to do it because I was really worried about the process. And you know what? I had every right to be because it was a process trying to adjust to everything. It wasn't just working with the slab mold. It was all of the tools that I needed in order to get that soap in the mold. I needed buckets to pour the colors in. I needed a big, really big pail to mix the oils, butters, and lye and water together. And the pail that I had was barely big enough. And the stick blender that I used to stick blend everything was drowning in that giant tub. And I was actually kind of worried that the stick blender wasn't gonna be able to blend all of that together. It did, but I definitely think I need to upgrade on the stick blender. I've had that guy for years now and I love that stick blender. A link to that is down below if you're curious. It's a great stick blender, but I don't wanna burn it out doing those big batches of soap and I don't wanna damage it by immersing it into soap like that. I don't think it's good for the stick blender in general and I don't wanna risk false trace. So not only was getting the soap in the molds difficult, but getting the soap out of the mold was also difficult and arranging it in the log splitter was difficult. So if you don't have a lot of upper body strength, this might be a struggle for you. <laughs> you might need someone with some brawn to help you out because this is no joke. This is really heavy for me and I do yoga and I work out somewhat, but it was, ooh, I worked up a sweat trying to get all of those soap bars cut 
but it is satisfying to see them all laid out here in a beautiful row. They are gorgeous. I love them. They all have their signature tops and I couldn't be happier. And I'm really excited that when I restock, I will have these soaps in stock for a while and it will buy me that time to be able to restock as needed without feeling like I'm behind all the time. So that is good. So if you want a recipe to make a batch that will fill a 24 pound soap slab mold like the one I used, you can find that on my Patreon, which is linked down below along with all of the colorants that I used and a few of the ingredients that I used. That's all in my description box. Speaking of my patrons, thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely wonderful and I appreciate each and every one of you, especially these guys, my bubble BFFs. I, I don't know what I would do without you guys. You guys are awesome. And lastly, I wanna thank July from Winston and Walter who made this gorgeous slab mold and gave it to me to work with. I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't able to use it right away because I was so nervous about it, but once I did it, I had those skills in my brain and I have started to build the confidence to continue doing that with future soap. So thank you so much. She is linked down below. I adore her, she is wonderful. And also a shout out to Etienne from La Fille de la Mer for showing me the ropes. I saw her at the convention and she did a demo for the people that were there and she helped me cut the giant slab of soap that she created. That was life-changing. <laughs> and I don't think she realizes the influence that she had on me in making me wanna do better and be better, be a better soap maker, crafter, soap business owner. She is awesome. She's also linked down below. But that is it. Thank you for joining me for the first video of 2024 moving forward. We are going to be doing a two video a week schedule and the videos will be vlog style, but also informative and concise. So if you don't wanna watch it, then you can skip that video. But if you do choose to watch that video, it'll be full of really good information that will hopefully help you as a soap business owner or a soap maker or a person who just loves watching soap being made, bath bombs being made, skincare being made. That's what you'll find here on this channel. And until that next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.